If you missed the generic patter, I said this is some generic patter in case you missed the... I'm going into an infinite loop now. Okay, hello and welcome to the stream. Uh, today, as it says here on our plans, um, last time I said I didn't want to create functions for the uh, Eclipse stuff that we're doing uh, because we didn't really need them. Uh, it turns out, of course, that um, this is way harder than I thought it was going to be, so I'm going to create functions, and I'm going to be honest with you, not because uh, we need them, but because I want to avoid doing real work. So we will create these functions, we may create some more functions, we may write an entire C library, uh, depending on how badly I want to avoid actually finding uh, solar and lunar eclipses in, uh, you know, using C spice. So this diagram I like because it's really confusing, and it's not accurate or useful because these the shouldn't be cutting off like this. Um, unfortunately, we are gonna have to go to a newer diagram that is less confusing, but maybe more useful although I wouldn't guarantee it. Um, I'm going to call this one um, Umbra. That didn't, that sounded really weird when I said it. Umbra. Okay. And what we're going to do here, assuming it comes to life, um, we're just going to, we, we've already sort of done this. We've sort of computed where the Umbra and the Penumbra are. Uh, but we're going to do it even simpler now. We're going to do it for... Um, we're going to make that, um, make it like, instead of having the fixed y value, we're just going to ask where is the umbral cone in respect to the, the two objects that we know are lined up, and what is the angle of the umbral cone, and we might even come up with a formula for the umbral cone. Um, a lot of this will be completely unnecessary, but um, in the same sense that uh, life is unnecessary. Um, and by the way, uh, we are using GMT here, so in approximately, I won't be on for this long, but in approximately four hours and 21 minutes, we will go ahead and enter the uh, 2020s, at which point n absolutely nothing will change because it's an arbitrary point on the Gregorian calendar. I just wanted to say that. All right, so now let's go ahead and create our little, um, our first uh, circle, and we, we might actually start making some assumptions here because I'm not really super confident that I, um, no, I can't do that. Can't do that. No, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, didn't mean to do that either. Okay. Um, by the way, there probably are instructions for this that make it a lot easier to do what I'm trying to do. Okay. Okay. Um, so that is going to be our smaller object at the origin. This is going to be the eclipsing object, or T, or... In our bizarre, in our bizarre way, where the we're looking at lunar eclipses, this is the Earth. So we will go ahead and paint it uh, blue in just a second here. Now we're going to create the. Um, here comes the sun, little darling. Ooh, ooh, here comes the sun. Uh, and let's go ahead and make it like far enough away that it's we can make it pretty big without having to um, without having to have it bump into the Earth. And I'm still sure this is going to be a mistake for some reason. So it appears you can get like snap two if if you like are near a point and you're actually trying to move a point to a snap two grid. So we do have that going on there. Okay. So now we're in our umbral cone, and this is where we this is where we draw the umbral cone. Um, I think we're going to create another point here. We we need well. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do this. This is going the umbral cone is definitely going to be on the x-axis. The only thing we're really going to ask is how far to the left of the center of T it is, and what angle it makes out, and then we might come up with a uh, formula for uh, a par parametric formula for each of the lines. Um, then separately, well, we'll also do the penumbra. So let's actually write this down. Wow, fun stuff. Um, the umbra, the penumbra, and then uh, cone intersects sphere or circle. And then we'll decide when a uh, cone intersects a sphere. So we're sort of breaking down our uh, original problem, which, if you will remember, is... Nope. Uh, nope, I don't want that. Uh, this is actually closer to what we want. Um, I don't think we have what we don't want anymore. But, um, I mean, we have it, but it's saved somewhere. Um, so we're going to break down this problem into basically three steps. One is finding the umbra, the other finding the penumbra, and then finding from the penumbra umbra, which is either one of them is actually a cone, whether or not a given sphere is inside the umbra or penumbra. Okay, so now the problem with drawing this line here is going to be, it's not, as you would think, 
um, going to touch the, the Y axis. Um, let's do that. Let's move the um, let's move this around a little bit. It's because it's going to be not it's not going to be like going through over here like you would expect or through over here as you would expect. It's as we discussed yesterday. It's going to go through the arc sign. Uh, it's going to go through the uh, well. Let's see. We can actually probably draw it now. And now we have to. Move. This is not an easy line to draw. I mean, it's not difficult either. But um, it's not the straight line you would expect it to be. And yeah, let me <whistles> let me see if I can actually move this to the uh, point where the line is exactly tangent there, and to the point where the line is exactly tangent here. No, no, I didn't mean to affect B. Be gone, B. And this is going to be tougher with this one because, of course, this is a much smaller sphere. Okay, I think I think we're good with that. And then we're going to go ahead and draw our. Um, we're going to draw two right triangles. Um, one of them is going to—I mean, obviously, this is going to be part of the x-axis. But let's go ahead and um, draw this. And I actually didn't want that. Control Z doesn't work because oh, it did. Wow. Either that, or I just hit it so fast that I didn't realize. So I actually want a line segment now um, that connects C and E. And I think if I let it go close enough, yeah, it does. It it sort of snaps to there. Um, this is a right angle. We now, I guess, need a point here where this touches. And we're going to create basically um, two right. We can also, uh, you know, we can also create the symmetric point here, and then just measure this angle. But we're actually going to go ahead and measure the half angle. So we will go ahead and add a point, um, which we're going to say is right there. Okay. No, 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 no. no I don't want to. Uh, there we go. A little bit difficult to to see what it's going to decide to glue together and what it's not going to decide to glue together. And then I think we can draw the line from um, G to C. Which is, of course, along the x-axis. And then I think we need to draw the line from... Oh, I moved F to the wrong place. Uh, we need to move... The, we, uh, I'll go ahead and move, uh, move F to... F is going to be harder to sort of get... Uh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus! By the way, my saying Jesus does not mean... I believe in a specific deity. Okay. Um, and I think the problem here is these are not going to look like, well, I mean, th they are parallel to each other, but they're not going to look it. Uh, and then we draw this line segment from, um, from A to F. Okay. That looks terrible. Um, let me go ahead and move F. So it it is it is um, okay. I mean, this is just a diagram, so I'm trying to be not too picky about it. Um, so we have this is a right triangle. This is a right triangle. But DCG, which we're not going to draw, is not a right triangle, is, is the point here. Okay, so we want to know from what point G uh, these angles are equal. Um, and the angles here are going to be angles E, G, C, and they're both the same. Um, and we've done this calculation before, uh, but now we're doing it with the assumption that the smaller body is at uh, zero. And the larger body is at a distance, we guess we'll call it um, ST. Hello, 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 we have a visitor. You are such a five head props. Um, I don't know what, I think five head was supposed to come out as an icon, it didn't. But either way, I'm going to assume that's a compliment, maybe. I don't know. Um, but if it's not, what I don't care. Well, thank you for visiting. Thank you for the Amazon Prime. That's actually the username. Thank you for the Amazon Prime. 
So go follow this guy. I don't know what the hell you're supposed to do. You maybe follow him. He's not a Unix command, but you can follow him anyway. Um, you are smart. I don't know any of this. Oh, well, that's very nice of you to say. I mean, the smart part, not that you don't know any of this. Um, and we're going to break it down a little bit and make a fairly simple um, diagram today. Um, the, instead of going more complicated, and basically we're saying, well, we have these two circles. And we want to know, if you're viewing it from here, uh, this is what angle you'll see that, you know, the two circles kind of line up. And if we drew the, the cone here, a very similar thing here, we would have like a little cone there. Um, so the... Um, so the distance here is going, this is, th this is a right angle. So this angle here will have a sign of the radius of the larger divided by the distance to the larger or the radius of the smaller divided by the distance to the smaller. Um, but either one of those we can, we can get. So, um, so let's go ahead and do it. Uh, what, where the hell are we doing all this? BC Eclipse Mechanics, I think. Yay. Okay. So we're going to put down here work started. Just to separate it out from the earlier work we did, this is much simpler work. We might create a C function for this. Um, cool. Well, thank you. And if you have any questions, comments, or anything, just let me know. If you, you know, just wanted to drop in and say hi, that's cool too. Totally up to you. Uh, I'm very comfortable streaming to nobody or to lots of people. Um, don't care. Okay, so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to say um, we know these angles are equal and we could say that, you know, the, uh, this angle is the arc sine of this radius over this distance. Uh, and it's, it's also the arc sine of this distance over this, this, sorry, this radius opposite over the hypotenuse. But instead of saying that, we're going to just say the values are equal. Because in, in this case, they're not only the arc sines are equal, the actual values are equal. Um, so the, uh, I guess the value we're looking for here is um, this we can call x. I'm now beginning to hesitate that we should be calling this x. And this value is known. This value is st. So, okay, I'll, I'll make a note here that I'm using x as a free variable. Um, the problem is we're using x in a lot of other ways, so I don't want to necessarily, like the x-axis, so I don't necessarily want to confuse us with, um, confuse things with uh, using x too much. On the other hand, the unknown quantity is x. So, so what we're saying here is, um, the uh, the the sign here is the opposite. That is the radius. This is uh, this is s. This is t. Maybe I should label, but I won't. So tr. That's the radius of t over the distance um, to t. And the ooh, okay, now I'm going crazy. Okay, and the distance. This is this is x here. So this and we know this is st. So this is x plus st. And we're saying that's equal to. And did I just say call that t? This is actually s, isn't it? I'm an idiot. Hang on. Stand by. That's sr. Sorry. sr over x plus xt. sr over x plus st is equal to tr over x. So that is, uh, that is how we set this equation up. Uh, we, did, we are going to go ahead and use mathx a little bit. Um, even though I'm really, really beginning to think we should use something else. But let's go ahead and... So let's do this. Uh, we can put this into mathx like this. We can ask mathx to solve for x. And again, this is a formula we've seen before. So this is probably not a surprising formula. Um, uh, nope, that's not what I wanted. I wanted the solution. This thing. Okay. So that's the solution that tells us where the, uh, what turns out to be called the umbral point is. Um, we can now measure this angle here, but we actually really want a slope, so we want the tangent of the angle. Um, so the angle is just going to be the arc sine of... Um, can we actually put this... I don't know if I want to do this. We could actually maybe put in like a little thing here that explains... Um, like... Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, no, good. I'm in here. Okay. So here... Oh, can I can I edit the name of this? That would be really useful, actually. All right, let me see if we can edit the name of this line. Um, so we'll call it SR, which is what it is. Oh yeah, we can. That is awesome. 
And I guess while we're doing that, we might as well give it a uh, the sun's color, uh, which is what it is. Um, oh no, I'm sorry. This is a line. We, can, we were going to keep our lines black. Yeah. Okay. So now that is SR. Uh, this is. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here because I think we're not getting our full. Um, we're not getting the full effect of this here. So that is SR. Um, be a little bit careful here. This length, now can I draw like a two-headed arrow thing? Um, vector, vector from point. Um, polygon, parallel line, fit locus. This is good stuff. I'm just trying to get a two-headed vector going here. Um, oh, you can even draw angles. Distance or length? Brilliant. So we want the distance or length from here to here. And that totally didn't draw. Whoa, hello. Select two points. Oh, okay. This guy and this guy. Oh. I don't... Okay, no, I don't want that. I want to actually draw this little thingy. So that wouldn't wasn't very useful. Uh, can I undo it? Distance be gone. Where are you from? Well, I am from Albuquerque, New Mexico, in the United States. It is currently 12:54 here. Uh, we have about 11 hours and six minutes left to midnight to the year 2020. However, this machine is in the Greenwich Mean Time Zone. Uh, so we have only about four hours and six minutes uh, to uh, to midnight here, but I'm probably not going to be streaming for that long. So uh, where are you from? Thank you for the Amazon Prime. I think you've told me before, actually, because we have met in other places. Um, slider, text, image, button, none of these. None of the above, please. Um, okay, I guess I can do this with a vector. Um, so this is really, a, a, you know, a more intended to do real math than to do um, than to do diagrams. But we can use vector. So we'll take the vector from here to here, or we won't. Are you an astronomer by chance? Oh, the Netherlands. Yes, Nederlander. Uh, yes, very good, very good country. Um, it's, if I remember correctly, I don't remember what time zone you guys are on, but it's like you're two hours from midnight, or let me know. I am an amateur astronomer. I am not a professional astronomer, um, and I've never been a professional astronomer, but let's see. All right, let me see if I can do my little vector thing here. That's not cool. All right, what does it want? Vector from, okay, vector, good. We just want a vector. S starting point, then end point. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, and I think I need to color that vector something. Three hours from midnight. So you guys are uh, eight hours ahead of where we are, and you are one hour ahead of Greenwich Mean Time. So it is 2055 for where you are. Um, we might, we probably won't, won't even make it to your midnight here. But if we do, we'll, and I remember, we'll celebrate. Um, so this line, I definitely, this vector, I think we definitely need to style. First of all, it's not going to be called U. It's going to be called X because that's what we've, we've decided it's going to be. Um, and look, this is actually not bad. Uh, no, 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 no. See, this is very careful. Uh, no, no, I don't want that. I don't want that. I want this. No, nope. how do I? Cool. You can click on the letter and you get the. Uh, so this is X, the vector from G to A. Um, what do you mean? Please check your input. X is a perfectly good name. Do I have something else named X? Let me see if I can name it Y, or is it just really unhappy? I am in edit mode, aren't I? Oh, that looks really nice. I like that. Can I name you Bob? Oh. Apparently I just didn't like it for some reason. Okay. Please check your input X. 
Oh, maybe it doesn't like me using x because it's the value for the x-axis, and same reason with y. So we'll just call this length. Um, so the conal point is going to be. All right, hang on. If we're going to do this right or even wrong, okay, okay, fine. Call this temp. We'll change its name in a minute. Uh, it's interesting to see, I work at an astronomy research facility as an electrical engineer, so you're closer to this stuff than I am. Um, so that is, that is awesome. So you're more of an astronomer than I am, dude. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go ahead and call this point, uh, this is T. You might as well be... Um, okay, I guess you can't edit it without... Uh, This is like a fun thing to not have. Oh, right, here we go. So this is now going to be point T, because that's what we were defining. Um, this is the circle, right? No, this is the point. Oh, this is the intersection of the X and Y axis. Well, it is T in our case, so we're fine. Uh, that's not what we want, though. Uh, we will now define... I think I'm going to define this. This is T, we're not calling it that. We're going to redefine this line. This line is TR. Um, I don't know what the hell this I is doing out here. Um, am I making this confusing by putting this B here? Let's, well, let's go ahead and fix this. This is going to be TR. And I realize I'm getting way too deep into just labeling things right now. Um, and I think I'm going to label it... Uh, now I'm, I'm really getting too deep into this. Um, I'll give it sort of a nice green color. No! No, no! Damn it! That's the freaking circle! Okay, fine. So TR is apparently the um, so TR is apparently the circle, not the name of the line segment TF. Uh, let me see if we can move B over to here. I mean, we still need to. Um, and I guess do we need TR at all here? I don't think we need a name for this. What? I can't unname it? Oh. Don't show label. That is so awesome. Okay. Um, so this is SR. I guess we can label this uh, point. What the hell can we label this point? This point doesn't really have a name. This point... Okay. So this whole circle we're calling T. This point, I guess we can call this point, um... I guess we're going to be really careful. We could actually draw this to be perfectly perpendicular. Um, because they do allow that. Um... Okay, what the hell is I? Oh, I is the, the segment. So... This is the thing we want to call... Uh, TR. There we go, and we'll move it a little bit. And this is also TR, and I think that it's okay to have... What? 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 Segment CG? No? Crap, hang on. I screwed something up. Oh, God, no. That was totally the wrong segment. Undo, undo. And yes, I'm getting way too caught up in doing this, um, in making this look pretty instead of actually doing any work. But that's okay, because as you remember earlier in the stream, I said my goal was to avoid doing work. So we are in, in pretty good shape here. We don't need to show that one. Okay, so this we can't call 
So this here is going to be point P, the umbral point. I don't know, what the hell is F doing here? Oh, F is that. Um, F is not groovy. Um, in fact, I don't think I want a name for this line. Okay, so can I do this like this, choose it, and then edit it? Settings, there we go. So, no label. And this point is going to be... This is easier than having to go back to that menu every time. This point is P. Um, I think we can call this length PT now. I think we can safely do that. Okay. Um, we know this value is TR. Why is it TR2? That's not cool. Oh, you can't have the same radi you can't name it the same thing twice. That's not useful. All right, we'll call it TR. And then the segment from T is there even a segment there from T to B? No, there's a segment from C to P. Yeah, PT is actually a horrible name for this because I'm gonna put it here because it that's also the abbreviation for point. But um, yeah, I'm beginning to think that maybe the problem is that we're gonna have to label something from P to C. Uh, no, actually we don't. We don't. We can actually get away with uh, doing a vector from T to C and call. Uh, okay, okay, hang on. Uh, this is gonna be S, not T. And settings your s okay this is sr this is also sr let me see if i can do this um like that i actually don't want to show these points i mean can i make this oh i can make them invisible can i settings um, don't even show, well, can I delete the object? I guess I can't delete the object because I need it to hold the position for where the circle is. It is if I go to the circle still, it'll tell me, not this, okay, where am I going? Over here? I, it still needs it to be there for the circle to exist, but we don't have to label it. So that's actually really useful. So don't show the object, don't show the label. Okay, so now we have, um... So we don't need to show this one either. We don't need to show the label. We do want to show the, the lines. And we want to know that it's the length TR. Um, so there's TR there. There is... Uh, we don't need this point to be labeled. We need the point. We don't need it to be labeled. Um, don't show label. So I guess it just uses these names... Uh, and it <laughs> okay, I'm going to put a message in the chat just to, because if someone says something, I, I, if you say something, I don't want it to be like lost in the other stuff you've said. Um, so I'm going to put a message in chat so my own color interrupts uh, this. So if you say anything else, I'll be able to see it, which is, which is what I want. Okay. So point T, point D, we don't need D here. That don't, what's the hell? Oh, D is the name of the circle. Yeah, we can, uh, circle we need. We do not need it to be named. Okay. Um, now, I was going to fill the circle with colors, but at this point, that seems like a bad idea, actually. Um, so there's P to T. God damn, I want to call that something else, but we'll, we'll leave it. So this is actually looking like a pretty good diagram now. Um, I think we can delete this line segment because we're going to overwrite it anyway. We're going to go from P to T and T to S instead of, uh, instead of bothering with this. So let's delete that object. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm now beginning to wish that I'd made my, um, one of these bigger, but it's not actually too bad. We're still, we're still in pretty good shape here. Um, so is there a way I can indicate this as a right angle? Uh, and again, uh, this is not meant for markup, so, um, I don't know if they'll allow me to mark. Um, they'll allow me to like put a little thing on here that says this is a right angle. 
Um, okay. Yeah. I apparently cannot say this. No, 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 no. Jesus. I don't think I can say that this is a right. It is a right angle, but I can't. I don't think I can say it. I mean, I could put little line segment. I could make a little polygon here that looks like a right angle. Should I do that? That would be kind of cute, actually. Put this over here. Um. Okay. Polygon. How the hell is that a polygon? Oh, hey. So we're going to start here. Oh, I see. Go to here. Go to there. Uh, and then stop. Stop the polygon! It's enough. Oh, come on. Okay. Maybe I don't need to do that. Maybe I can make a little square or something. Um, that's not a great looking square. Whoa! No, no, we want it aligned. Okay, that does not look aligned, and that doesn't even look like a regular polygon, but we're going to move you, nope, oh, wait. oh, okay, probably not the effort it's, it's taking, oh, actually this is going to be a pain in the ass to a mine, maybe, I mean, for one thing, this isn't actually a right angle, I just kind of estimated it, so this is going to be a little bit of a pain here, Screw it, we don't need the polygon. Um, so we don't need point... Where the hell did point C come from? Kind of just came out of nowhere, huh? Point... Oh, these must have been the points of the polygon, so... Let me quickly... If I delete this, will I do it? No, okay, good. Uh, right, there's another point under it that actually anchors the, uh, the anchors the circle. Okay, so now we have... Yep, we're going to need to zoom out a little bit here. Okay, so now we have... Uh, stop before the point I... Okay. So now we have... Um, I'm trying to find a good place to put this length. And you know what? Maybe this would look better as a vector. I wonder if I can change the type of an object. Let's see. Oh my god, I can. I think. Let's see if that worked. <gasps> Brilliant! That is a vector. And that vector, we can probably give it a nice little color here. Um, let's see. I think I want to make that vector and this vector the same color to indicate that they're parallel. Um, I, I've become a, I've become a, uh, like a wordsmith now. I, not a wordsmith, uh, 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 and I don't like that actually of myself. Okay. Okay, that is insanely gay. With no offense to people who actually are gay, let's make that a little bit darker. There, turquoise. Okay, that is awesome. So we have S R there. Still can't say this is a right angle unless can I? Can I? I want to be careful here, because these lines need to be tangent, but I'm not, I don't know if I can draw a, a tangent. Perpendicular ray, poly vector from point, segment with given length. I mean, I could compute all of the... Oh, hello there, Putin roaster. Well, Putin roaster, I assume Putin is the uh, Russian prime minister, or whatever he is, Mr. Putin, and you're going to roast him. Uh, or at least you roast him some of the time. Nice to meet you. Hello there. If you have any questions, comments, uh, whatever, just let me know. I'm trying to see if I can get, uh, right now, um, and I'm way too deep into this, get GeoGebra to draw a uh, perpendicular... A oh, I can draw a tangent line. Okay, hang on. Select a point. 
or line than circle, conic, or function? Um, I'm just. This is just a test. Okay. I don't think I'm going to go that deep into this. Have you been to the Los Pollos Hermanos restaurant? Well, you're very local here, either that or... No, that's got to be. That's got to be in Albuquerque, right? Um, I have not. Uh, that would be the uh, Two Brothers... No, that would be the Brothers Chicken Restaurant. Um, there's a Los Pollos here, but I don't think it's Los Pollos Hermanos. Um, are you in Albuquerque, Mr. Putin Roaster? If so, I'll take you out to lunch. I won't really take you out to lunch. That was just a thing I said. Okay, so let's see if we can ma map this to also be... Um, I just think I decided on that color. And I think we decided to make this a vector instead of a segment. So we're getting things that are looking real pretty now. Um, no, but I watched Breaking Bad. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a Los Poyos restaurant. I don't know if there is a Los Poyos or Manos restaurant here. They did change the name slightly. I know they use a lot of local places, but they I think they've edited the name slightly. We have a New Mexico Educators Federal Credit Union here. Uh, but when they filmed it, um, um, they used the same design and stuff, but I, don't, I think they used a different name. Slightly different name. Um... Okay, so this is TR. This is Pete. I'm getting more and more ha unhappy with my name here. Um, but I guess we'll keep it. And I'm also getting more and more happy with how long I'm taking to do this. So of getting actual work done. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What the hell happened to this line? I changed it, didn't I? Oh, maybe I, f maybe I shouldn't have escaped out of that change. Okay. X. There we go. Wait. One more time. And we made it into a vector. Now I can X out of this. Now I can move the label, I think, independently of the, of the vector. Okay. They should have made a restaurant similar to the one in the show. Easy money grab, in my opinion. I don't know. I mean, even the Albuquerque uh, Chamber of Commerce has some issues with whether or not... How, to what degree do we want to be affiliated with a uh, television program that's basically about manufacturing and selling drugs. I mean, it's not what it's about, but I mean, th there's a lot of that in there. Um, so there is sort of this, do we want to be associated, there's sort of a love-hate relationship with that show. Um, so, we, so, you know, we don't necessarily want to be, uh, want to be the, in that, uh, in that, I mean, I'm saying we, I mean the city, I don't, I don't, uh, um, I personally am totally okay with it. Um, so, PT, and now we need TS. That one I think we can get pretty easily. Vector. There we go, and the vector will not be named you. It will be named, well, we're going we're gonna to tweak it quite a bit here. It's going to be uh, TS, which is its length. It is going to be a vector, and it is going to be... Um, some random stupid color. There we go. Okay. Okay, so now we have, um, I'd like to draw a little angle in here. This is the angle we're trying to get. This is the point P we're trying to find. Uh, PT is the value we're trying to find. TS is the known value. SR and TR are known values. Um, I'm kind of tempted now to see if we can make the other side uh, by, um, hmm, but the chicken looks so good in the show, well, yeah, you know, um, don't know if that would actually work, uh, you know, it would be a real restaurant, it wouldn't be a restaurant that sells, um, I've heard that on TV they uh, try to make food look better than it is, but maybe that's only for advertising, I don't know, we do have good chicken here, though. So come down and try some. But we don't have a restaurant that does that. Okay, now, and thank God this stream is about wasting people's time, because I'm now going to try to draw actual tangent between a line that goes tangent through S and T. Um, 
by using the little magical function here. So select a line or point and then circle or conic function. Conic or function. So I'm going to take this guy and this guy. That was the coolest thing ever. I mean, we drew like 10 billion lines we don't need, but that was really, really cool. In fact, it's so cool, I'm going to redo this diagram. Anyway, are you excited for the new decade? Any predictions? Um, I am excited for the new decade. Um, I predict, based on my age, medical history, and uh, barring any sort of uh, a major advancement in medicine or computer science, I predict I will not survive to the end of the decade. It's kind of grisly, but I think that is a very realistic prediction to be making. Bet you didn't want to hear that! Okay, now, in fact, I like that so much, uh, I'm going to get rid of this line, which I sort of made up on my own. Whoa. That was kind of not cool. Um, and, yeah. And I guess I'm going to get rid of these two, because these are actually not accurate. They're just... Uh, So I think we're going to be down to just two circles at this point, and I might make the circle a little bit bigger. If, in fact, I can. Um, I don't care what it's named. Circle TB, oh, B is actually invisible. Um, so I guess we could. there's a point B in here somewhere. That's not what I meant to do. Oh. Um, don't worry, as soon as CRISPR becomes available, we'll all live to the age of 150. I don't know what CRISPR is, and I'm tempted to look at it, but I'm not going to look at it on stream just in case it's something bad. Um, CRISPR mutation detection. Um, um, yeah, can, does it, can it, don't worry, can it edit living people, or is this just for the newborns that are going to get this technology? Um, can we manipulate our own genes? Because I want to be, like, fabulously skinny, healthy, and I want to be a girl. I mean, I, you know, I don't really tell people that that much, but, you know, I want to be a girl who's into STEM. Um, so, let's see. You know what? I might just actually start a whole, I might just, like, just delete everything. Can we multi-delete? Delete all. Oh, cool. We can actually shift. Delete. I think I got rid of everything. Awesome. I rock. Okay. So now that we have nothing, um, and by the way, um, this is one of the few times I'm going to check how long I've been streaming. for. No I've been streaming for 43 minutes, so if you've been watching uh, and you're not, uh, you know, you're not otherwise participating, I've wasted 43 minutes of your time because we're now back to square one. Um, I believe CRISPR can be used to cure a number of diseases, including HIV and cancer. Can it be used to cure a lifetime of abuse uh, leading to type 2 diabetes, um, obesity caused by eating lots of stuff because I want to, and just generally neglect of the human body to the extent that I'm amazed that it's still running today? Because if it can, I'm in. If it can't, um, then it's not going to help me. All right, so I'm, I'm, all right, now that I've wasted all that much of your time, let's go back and do it again. Okay, so this time we're going to create a, we're still going to create the two circles. Um, circle with center and radius, center, radius two. Oh, that's cool. That way I don't even have to give it an extra point. And this, we're not going to label this sucker. What the hell? No, no, be gone. I guess that's the one bad thing is you have to kind of restore to, um, Okay. Cool. We're going to not label you. Um, I mean, we could. Um, but we don't have to. Yes, you can still be Circle C if you want to be. But you're not going to be labeled. Oh, and I guess you can label it um, whatever the hell you want. Okay. That's kind of cool. Um, and you will be... No, you will not be of any color. 
You will not be a circle of color. Um, oh, and you will be named S, though. And I think that's actually the point, not the, not the, the center of the circle, but whatever. You're going to be named T. I'm sorry, you're going to be named T, not S. Um, I believe diabetes type 2 can be treated by making your cells more sensitive to insulin, true, which again can be done through CRISPR. Okay, how about uh, getting rid of the obesity I already have because of diabetes? And actually, um, making your cells more sensitive to insulin, uh, that is the reason type 2 diabetes exists. It's uh, uh, your cells have become insulin resistant. And other people have talked and said that, yes, in theory, uh, you can... Um, your, your cells don't, like when they're born, they don't start out insulin resistant. That's just what happens to them as they, you know, grow through their, they only live for like 90 days. So in theory, if you could like do a purge for 90 days, you could in theory cure diabetes. I don't know if anyone's tried it. I don't know if, know if what I'm saying is true. I know even less about medicine than I do about math and astronomy. Um, but that would be kind of cool. So I don't, I, I, I'm looking at this here, CRISPR, CRISPR babies, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, um, it looks interesting. It looks interesting. I personally uh, want to upload my brain into a computer and then live forever as a machine. And I think that is a, uh, that is a uh, very good goal that people should have. And we're going to make another circle with the radius. I'm just trying to keep the stream going a little bit, but I, you know, I don't really care. So center and radius, and we're going to make it from here, I think going out six. Okay, and nah, I, th the problem is my umbral cone is going to end up like way the frick over here, which I, you know, which I don't want. So let's make this actually, let's edit this circle in many ways. So edit part one is we're going to not show the label. We are going to rename what's being called point A now. Um, we're going to leave it this color. I think we're going to shrink it down to... Um, shiny um circle point a five and maybe i'm going to move it one to the left okay so if i do this correctly uh i should be able to move everything uh as i do it crispr's crispr is revolutionary in the way it has changed the whole paradigm of how we treat diseases well, that's fantastic. Um, I mean, my doctor hasn't told me about it yet, so um, he's still treating my disease the old-fashioned way with insulin and telling me to diet and exercise while I ignore him, which is uh, what you're supposed to do with doctor's advice, in case you didn't know. Okay, so what are, what are my objects here? Um, point T, circle, point A, and that's the one thing I need to change here. Um, I guess it needs to create a point f to make it the center of something. So your point name will be S, and everything else about you will... No, 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 you, get, you have to be black. We'll remain the same. And maybe we'll put the... No, no, we'll do this over here. Let's see, S. No, we might as well put you up here, because we're going to be drawing stuff under you. And yes, I'm referring to abstract points as you. Um, so until CRISPR shows up, let me draw my nice circles here. Okay, now we're going to be doing the really cool tangent thing that uh, allows us to draw a tangent through this and this that will intersect the, uh, uh, let's see, tangents. Give me a tangent through this circle and this circle, and there's going to be multiple ones. Okay, awesome. Now, I, what, no, I want to go here. Um, okay, so now I want to be careful. I want to delete some of them without deleting all of them. This is the penumbra, which we actually do want later. Um, line I, common tangent of conic D and C. Well, yes, yes it is. Uh, I don't want it, though. If I delete it, though, oh, man. 
Are you excited for new improvements regarding AIs and machine learning and how it will affect our society? That is a definite no. Um, there's a big problem with the way God does. So, so by the way, for those of you who actually are watching the stream later or other than Putin you Roaster watching the stream, let me check to see if there's anyone actually in chat here. Oh, wow, there's actually a few people here. So the rest of you who are uh, in chat, uh, I've wasted a lot of your time by drawing a diagram and erasing it and redrawing it. I'm going to waste some more of your time by arguing with Putin Roaster here. Um, I have a big problem with AI because I think um, people don't understand how to use statistics but yet AIs are using statistics to make decisions. Uh, and I think there's a fundamental error the way people are doing that. So almost all of the machine learning and AI we have today is, is based on a flawed principle of statistics. I could be wrong about that, and I, you know, I should probably put that as a, like a, a label on my chat. But what I've seen of, of machine learning is it's using statistics, it's using things like uh, correlation to mean, mean causation, which is not true. It's using extrapolation uh, to predict trends, which is not valid. Uh, interpolation is actually not valid in statistics either, though it's usually not terrible. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of other things. There's a, you know, logical fallacies, there are hundreds of those. Statistical fallacies are a subset of logical fallacies, but there are hundreds of those as well. There's a, there's a lot of problems with what we're calling AI and machine learning today. It is a, it's really, really bad. It's really dangerous. Um, I don't necessarily object to it if it's being used to help people, um, even though it's wrong. I mean, it, it's not correct. But the, the bigger problem is it can be used to harm people, and that is, um, that is very dangerous, I think. Um, that's all I'm going to say about it for now, but if you want to, unless you want to say more about it. Uh, meanwhile, let me figure out how to get rid of some of these tangents without getting rid of all of them. Um, let's see. Oh, can I just delete the ones I don't want to see? Can I just say no, don't show object? Okay. Actually, I, I want to show it. I want to see if I can and change it as an individual. Are you a math teacher? I was a math professor, yes. I am currently retired. I do still teach math to some people if they want, want to learn it, and programming. Um, and I'm getting more and more excited about teaching people on stream, uh, because in theory it can help some other people so usually uh, it's so specific it won't. So it's one of those things where you can pretend like you're helping a lot of people but not actually doing it. And those are sort of my favorite uh, things to do. Let me see if I can edit this item directly. This is a, um, okay. Um, this is tangent DC. So I guess all of these lines are gonna be tangent DC. I mean, these circles are named C and D even though you can't see that. Um, so I say don't show object. This is confusing to me. Oh, this is, n okay, this is I. Okay, good. Now let me go over here. This is G. Okay, good. We have different names for them. So why can't I delete object I? That's not cool. Um, oh, you know what? Maybe I can delete it from over here. Hang on. So let's see. This is point T. You're fine there. This is circle, you're good. Point, circle, no, no, j j j come back here. Uh, that line is one of the two lines we actually want. This line is the other of the two lines we actually want. This line is a penumbra one which we'll want later, but we don't want right now. Can we delete it? What the frick? Are these objects grouped or something? Can I ungroup them? Uh, that's cool, I'm learning about math at college level. It's about to take complex analysis and differential equations, both lots of fun, actually. Um, uh, complex analysis and, yeah, they're, they're, both, they're both good fun things to do. Okay, hang on, do I have grouped objects here or something? Because um, I know it has something called a grouping parameter. Um, I don't know how you ungroup objects, though. Well, actually, if this is grouped, should be able to ungroup it. Settings. Um, color, style, advanced, algebra, scripting. What does this mean? Oh, that's those are global settings. 
Um. God damn it! Ungroup. Pieces of crap. Is complex analysis useful for engineering? Well, um, honestly, I've never done engineering. I prefer to remain in the um, sort of abstract world where everything I do is completely useless. Uh, but actually, I do hear that, yes, engineers do use complex analysis. Um, I mean, complex numbers, at least. Uh, engineers do use them. Um, it has something to do with the, the way physicists, who are, you know, the ones who come up with those equations, they do have a use for uh, both complex analysis, imaginary numbers, and the quaternions, uh, which is a which is actually a fairly interesting system of where you have three imaginary numbers, uh, and they they interact with each other, uh, and that that's interesting too. Um, I and I think uh, engineers and quat and uh, physicists use it because it has something to do with stress strain or whatever. I don't know why they use it, but I think they do use it. Um, Sort by, no, no, I want to, what the frickin' hell? Object type. That didn't do anything for me. Um, oh, I, hang on, hang on, uh, fix, uh, no, I don't want to fix the object. Uh, okay, I'm going to go look at, um, GeoGebra is actually pretty, pretty good program, despite my disliking it right now. Um, there should be a way to ungroup these objects, and I and I'm going to um, I'm going to actually use Google, well, the default search engine here, ungroup tangent lines. Ooh, always bad when Google doesn't try to suggest something. Tangents tools uh, must include ungroup. Um, actually, maybe we should look at the tangents tool. See what we've done here. Would you rather pursue a career in mathematical optimization or numerical maths? Um, see, to me, those things sound very similar to each other. Uh, I mean, pure math is what I pursued, a, not a career in, but pure math is what I got my degree in and what I taught. Uh, optimization usually requires numerical maths because, uh, you know, in, in theory, you can optimize mathematical equations using derivatives and all this good stuff and come up with pure perfect answers in the real world I mean even for what we're doing here um, you know the predicting the positions of planets even if you're looking at a simple elliptical orbit which which we never have um, even that's actually difficult to uh, you can't really do that exactly I mean you could create functions that you know uh, that uh, pr pretend to solve the problem exactly but to compute those functions, you need numerical methods. Um, so I think, I don't like numerical math. I don't want to do it myself. Um, I mean, I'm doing it now, so I guess that's not really true. Uh, but I think that if you want to work in the real world, at some point you're going to hit numerical maths. And so I would, you know, I would just break down and do it, honestly. Um, I mean, you know, in theory, I could be doing algebra here. I mean, abstract algebra here. I could be trying to prove theorems about rings and ideals and all this cool stuff. And I certainly was actually very fascinated by um, by a logical uh, by a program that basically generated theorems. It's I think a prede predecessor to Prover Nine, and that would have been a fun thing to do actually, is to use something like that to see if I could prove harder and harder mathematical theorems using this automated prover. Um, I did not do that obviously, and I guess um, and I guess this is where I ended up. So I mean, I ended up doing this. Um, Abstract algebra, it's, it's a beautiful subject, and, um, and you know, it's, um, it, is, it is something that I might do at some point again, um, but somehow, and I guess this is, me, you know, sort of me admitting that I, I'm more part of the real world, world than I want to admit, being able to solve problems like this, like, you know, where, where can you see an eclipse or something, they, they seem to have more sort of a fun value. They seem more graphical, you can answer questions on Stack Exchange. Um, I mean, for all I know, there's some place in the world where people are asking uh, complicated questions about abstract algebra that, and that if I pursued algebra, I would be able to help them with. But, and, and it's probably actually in, you know, uh, mathoverflow.net, uh, which is where they have the really hard math questions. But again, I'm not doing that. I, I sort of got into this more uh, numerical kind of math here. Um, let's see. Selecting a point, so this is good. So predicting, uh, da, 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 da. 
to pr pr okay, good. That's fantastic. That's exactly what we did. So how do we fix it now? Oh, that's it. That's all they tell us. Um, that's me. Um, um, let's see. Let's see if we can get the word ungroup in there. Um, properties. Okay. Yeah. I'm three seconds away from getting too bored with this to just go ahead and hide the other parts of the conics. Okay, and that's it. I'm done. All right, we're going to hide the parts of the conics we don't need for right now. Um, so you are not... You're there, but we can't see you. If we can't see you, you're not there. That's actually a... Okay, so these are the parts of the conics we need. This is our glorious intersection point. Um, you know, would making S bigger actually... Um, that would bring the po uh, point closer, wouldn't it? So let's maybe do that. And this, when I say S, I mean the circle here, which is actually not S, but it is S. Uh, let's see if we made the circle S six. What that does? Okay, let me let me take a little bit of a look here. Mm. I mean, the one thing it makes clear is that this point here is very different from this point here. Uh, that the uh, the tangent point is not the same as the point that's higher in y value. Um, we now have. How do we like say? Oh, actually, I guess we can choose the settings here. Um, I'm going to get rid of the uh, the labels here. We don't really need these to be labeled. I mean, we we do, but we're going to label them ourselves. Okay, now I can choose them individually for some reason. Um, anyway, okay. So here we are. Here are the um, S and T. Here are the um, the lovely tangent points. Um, so is this is this a tangent? Can we actually call this a tangent point? Point on object. Um, actually, can we? We should be able to name that tangent point. Uh, is optimization and partial differential equations related somehow? Uh, yes, they are. Um, in a lot of mathematical optimization, uh, we use derivatives and set equal to zero. I'm sure you've seen that in calculus where we're basically trying to find where a derivative is uh, zero, uh, meaning that some quantity is either maximal or minimal. Uh, for functions of one variable, you're using uh, you know, ordinary differential equations. Um, when you get to more vari than one variable, you have to start taking partial derivatives, and that's where partial differential equations show up. So um, in fact, a few days ago on this stream, which I do have record on YouTube, not that you want to see it, um, I was trying to optimize something that required, had both latitude and longitude. And to do that, you need to optimize two variables at the same time. You can't just optimize, you can't just optimize latitude and hope that longitude comes out correctly. So yes, partial differential equations, or partial derivatives at least, are important in optimization. Those lead to partial differential equations, so on and so forth. Uh, if you want to be an engineer, um, there might have special coursework for engineers, because you don't necessarily need to know all of the theory behind all of this to use it. Um, if you want to know the theory behind it, that's great. Take the full course. Um, now, keep in mind, if you're really starting to enjoy the theory behind all this stuff, as opposed to the results that you can use, you might, uh, you know, like uh, Jeff Foxworthy says, you might be a redneck, you might be a pure mathematician. And then you have to decide whether you actually want to pursue that course. Uh, in sort of the pure academic math versus, uh, you know, applied mathematics, which is the opposite. Um, and I'm a pure mathematician, I mean, you know, or I claim to be at least. Um, so I, you know, I've made my decision there. Okay, oh yeah, we we're trying to find a... Um, so we have the tangent line, but how do we get the tangent point? Line, god damn it. All right, let me see if, we, the, if this gives us, incidentally, the tangent point. I don't think it does, though. Um, 
and see what this is. Let me make this a little bit wider. Um, then how about linear programming? How is that related to differential equations? Um, linear programming, linear analysis, um, it's, um, linear, I mean, I, I want to be careful what I say here because it is very important. Linear programming, linear analysis uh, is, a, is a great field. Um, simplify, uh, so linear programming is, is like uh, we have matrices and all that stuff. It turns out it's really, really easy and fast to solve linear programming problems. I mean, it's not really fast if you're doing it by hand, but with computers, it's amazingly fast. Much, much faster than trying to solve partial differential equations or ordinary differential equations. Uh, the idea here is that with linear programming, matrices, invert matrices, there's super fast ways of doing all this stuff. Um, so if you can approximate your problem as a linear programming problem, you can solve it very quickly. And in some cases, you can get preliminary solutions using linear programming. So that's the benefit there. Uh, the um, so I mean I'm, uh, this is going to be I'm going to get like seriously dinged for this statement. Um, differential equations let you solve things exactly and precisely, but a lot of times a lot of functions, a lot of things can be modeled as approximately linear. Um, that's sort of the entire concept behind derivatives, um, you know, power series. A lot of things in real life, when you get, like, really zoom in on them, are approximately linear. I mean, if you think about it, even the Earth, which, you know, is, I'm pretty sure it's spherical, but at any given point on the Earth, you can treat it as though it's pretty flat. I mean, you know, you have to be a little bit careful there. But again, and so, again, linear programming is great for when you can make assumptions of things being approximately linear in a, in a small area. So that, that, that works in a lot of places where, where that can happen. Now, be, be careful. Um, you can't always, you know, linear programming, you can't assume that, like, you if you want to assume the world is flat for a small area to do math, that's fine. You, you'll get correct results. But if it gets too big, um, then it doesn't work anymore. So linear programming, uh, and, you know, if you run into things that change, like the temperature of, of the average temperature in the city is going to look like a sine wave uh, over the year. You know, summer it's going to be higher, winter's going to be lower. Um, you can't really approximate that as a line. That, that would be a very bad idea. However, if you're looking at the weather for the next week, uh, you know, and it's, and, you know, that you might be able to approximate as a line. Uh, so I've said a lot of stuff now. And, okay, so let me go back to this and feel free to keep asking questions. Um, I don't really give a rat's ass about what I'm doing, which is, by the way, true in life in general. So what is the trace? Label fix auxiliary object. What the hell? Oh shit! Did I just create like ten copies of this? Oh. Oh well, I don't want to show those. Auxiliary objects, I guess, are the other tangents that I am. Uh, that I'm looking at here. Um, so what I'm let's see, let's see if we can do some algebra on this. Okay, great. Um, I'm trying to find where this point is. Um, okay. Scripting. Oh God, I didn't know you could do all this, but I'm, I don't want to. Um, advanced. This is all advanced for graphics, though. Um, thanks for answering. I'm kind of stuck whether to pick more programming optimization courses versus applied math courses. Well, I mean, the problem is if I, if if I were you know if I'd been asking this question uh, 40 billion years ago, uh, however old I am, I'm 60, but I guess it would have been a long time ago in, anyway, about 40 years ago, maybe 45 years ago, I would have been asking this question. At that point, I would have said applied math, but today, honestly, um, programming is huge. Some people think it's going to die out, and eventually it will, uh, but I think that if you're looking at the future, programming is going to remain very hot. Um, and honestly, um, applied math I mean, they sort of go together. Programming is a kind of applied math. But honestly, uh, if you want to have a career in the future, programming is going to be like the number one thing. I think at least for the next 20 years, 
Um, programming is going to be huge. You probably have, um, um, you probably can make your entire career out of programming. I mean, there are still people who have jobs programming VAX VMS systems. And those are the ones that were before, you know, we had Unix. Um, I think Digital Corporation made them, but I could be wrong. Um, before the, the VAX VMS started off on those big computers that de needed their own rooms and their own air conditioning. And people are still maintaining those systems. So in all seriousness, if you get if you get to learn programming today, you learn how to do some good programming stuff today, even if we move away from programming in the future, you will have a job programming, you know, today's computers will be considered legacy at that time. You will have uh, you will have a job with that. So I would say for anyone right now, if you're choosing between you know sort of scientific topics, um, programming is like math in the sense that everyone's going to use programming. They already use it a lot. In the future, they're going to use it more. All the other scientific disciplines are going to use programming more. Um, and of course, you know people will be using it more. Um, at some point, someone's going to create the computer that can understand people, the sentient computer. Uh, then we're going to have some problems. But, you know, you might be the one who works on that. Uh, you might be the one who works on that team. You might do it on your, on your own. Um, so until we reach that point, and once we reach that point, the, the world's going to have terrible problems that are much more serious than deciding what to do with your life. So I would definitely say go for programming right now if you're looking for a career. Um, which I assume you're doing. I assume that, that you're looking for a cute career and you know want to make money off of this stuff. If you're a dilettante who has lots of money and just wants to stu study stuff for fun, then study pure math because it is, um, we joke that it's completely useless. It, it does have some uses sometimes. Uh, but then, you know, that would, be, that would be purely cerebral and not be useful. But if you're looking to get a job uh, and you have some interest in programming, I would just hit programming hard. That's the way to do it. Okay, what the hell was I doing? Oh yeah, I was trying to see if I can find the tangent point. I just want to make a change in the world. Well, you know, computer programmers are making changes in the world. They're doing a lot of stuff. Um, I'm not saying that an individual without a computer couldn't make a change. They might be able to. But honestly, with a computer, you can bring people together. You can, um, you can write code that does stuff that hasn't been done before, at least, you know. Um, I think computers are the way to do it. It's like, um, I don't know if people still do, people remember this, but um, there was a time that you could put on, I think you still can actually, put on a suit, which gives you like superpowers in the sense that you move your hand a little bit and it moves this very powerful thing. So you can like lift huge rocks. I don't know if I imagine this, this might be like from a comic book or something. But that's what I see a computer like. It's a very, it's a good lever or lever, depending on how you pronounce that word. Um, you do can do very little, and the computer can do very much. So it sort of ac amplifies your power. Um, so, like I said, you know, and there should be someone out there, apparently not in my chat though, um, who's going to tell you the opposite, that computers are bad and evil, and what you need to do is actually, uh, you know, get rid of computers and join a human organization that fights against excessive computing in the world, and uh, w bring down the computer, uh, the computer ogolarchy that we have now. Um, I won't tell you that. Uh, once the computers have taken over and you're like, damn, I shouldn't have listened to him, I, well, I'll be dead then, so I don't have to worry about that. But honestly, I do think, uh, I think computers are the way to go because they amplify your power to do things. And I don't think they will, no, that's not true. I think they will turn against us at some point. But I don't know when that point is. And so, you know, that's that's where we are with this. Okay. So apparently they're not going to let me find the frickin' tangent point here. Or if they are, they're not going to tell me how to do it. Um, tangent DC... Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. X-axis, Y-axis, grid. Object type. Okay. So if there is a way to get the actual point where this is tangent to this, I'm not seeing it. Um, 
But programming courses require a fair share of mathematical understanding, right? Um, boy, this is a real hot topic. Let me see if there's anyone else in chat who wants to just sort of... Okay, there's fewer, there's still quite a few people in chat, but not as many. You can, you can argue this point with people um, uh, until you're blue in the face, basically. Um, I've met programmers who don't seem to know a lot of math. Um, I mean, programming obviously requires logic. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, uh, I guess what I'm saying is if you go into programming, they will teach you enough math to program more than enough math to program. You don't have to take mathematical courses separately. You don't need to know calculus to program. You don't need to know abstract algebra, groups, rings, fields, ideals to program, unless you're programming in that area. But no, um, programming requires a surprisingly little amount of sort of what I would call fancy mathematical knowledge. Um, even algebra you don't really use in programming. Um, it does require logical thinking, loops, structures, if-then statements, all that. that. That's basic logic. It is not the same thing as, as sophisticated mathematical understanding. But yeah, you do need to know about logic and stuff. But that's not, it's not the same thing as like, you know, the, the real people who are doing um, real analysis, complex analysis. Um, it, unless you're programming that area, you will never be using complex or real analysis to write a computer program. That just doesn't happen. Uh, I guess the only exception to that rule is if quantum computing becomes a bigger thing. Um, but even then, that's really not that, that difficult. So, so yeah, you don't, you don't, if you're going to programming, you don't need to take a lot of math courses. Because it's not, that kind of math that you do in math courses is not going to come up in programming. Uh, programming, you're going to have very sort of basic logic. Um, so that's it. Okay. So... I'm annoyed um, at, n at this, not at you. Okay, so God damn it. So now I need to, I know where this point is, I know where this point is. I'm sure I could compute the frickin' um, do I have the equation? I probably even have the equation to this line, don't I? Um, advanced. Okay, yes, but what is it? Um, they're not gonna tell. Me, they're not gonna tell me what the values are. Um, this is the intersection point. Okay, well, um, this is actually looking like a diagram that we could actually use for something. Um, so now let's draw a vector from. Now let's draw a vector from um, the center of this to this tangent point, which I don't think it'll let, it won't let me actually see where it is. So that's kind of annoying. Um, Vector from point, starting point, then end point. Wait, can I choose, like, if I, if I, if I, okay, hang on. Intersect. Select the intersection of two objects successfully, successively. This and this. Booyah! Frickin' booyah. That is frickin' awesome. I love this program. I wish I could do symbolic manipulation. I probably can. I just don't know how yet. This point. Awesome. Um, we're not going to do it on the south. We're not going to do it over here. I mean, th those points obviously still exist. We're just not going to talk about them. Um, intersection of this and this. Freaking A. I'm excited. Um, so now this point does not need a name, though. It just needs to exist. This point does not need to have a label. Um, and this point does need to have a label, but its label is going to be something different. Its label is going to be, I guess we're putting our labels above, its label is going to be P. Okay. This is pretty good shit, actually. It's my shit. It's my shit. Um, and now we're going to draw a vector. We need to draw this vector, this vector, this vector. We do not need to draw this vector. It's going to be a trapezoid. Um, okay, I'm going to put three dots into a uh, chat now because uh, if you say s all of the current messages are yours, so I won't be able to recognize if you type a new message. So I'm just going to put three dots into chat just so when you talk again, I, I will be able to answer you. I will see what you've done. 
Okay, so now we're going to call this vector here SR. It could just be a line, actually, but I like vectors. Starting point and no, vector, starting point, and then end point. Starting point is here, end point is there. Yay! And you will get some properties. First of all, you will be named SR. Um, second of all, I need to see what you look like now. And we're probably going to go ahead and do SR like this. Um, I'm actually fairly happy with. Uh, I guess if we're going to use color, um, although I'm not even sure we need it now, you can be colored this sort of uh, soft red color. Yeah, that looks pretty, shiny. Now we're going to do the same for... Be a little bit careful. Okay, this is actually nice, yeah. Um, so we're going to do... What the hell am I doing here? Vector, vector, vector. Vector specter, what's your vector? I don't know what that means. And so this, you're going to be of radius TR, so we're just going to call you TR. Uh, and you are going to be... Your color is going to be the same as the other color there, which I sure think was this color. Gorgeous. I just sounded so gay when I said that. Not that there's anything wrong with being gay. Okay. Um... So this is really nice. Um, so I could draw an angle in here, but although I'm really more interested in the half angle here. So let's go ahead and draw the vector from P to T and then from T to S. And I think we are in good frickin' shape. And then we'll draw another one from T to S. We're going to give these different names, obviously. Gorgeous. Um, and we're going to give them colors because I like, apparently I've gotten really weird about this. So this is PT. This is the vector PT. That's its length, actually. Um, and we are going to give it a color of... How gay can I be without being too gay? That, I think, is a fairly moderate amount of gayness for that. This is not V. This is going to be TS. But not T.S. Eliot. That's different. And I do want to give this a different color because it is a, it's a separate vector even though it's collinear with the other one. So let's give this a... Um, let's give this this sort of... This is a color we used in the 70s a lot. Uh, it's not really popular anymore. And you can see why it's not popular because it sucks. Um, okay, so we now have P.T.T.S. S or T or, um, and we want to measure where P is, that's fine, we're good with that, um, and we want to measure this angle, we also want to measure rise over run, like the, the, the tangent of that angle. Now the question is, can I draw this angle, uh, given a, giving it three points, S, P, and this unnamed point here. Um, and then give it a name. And I'll bet you anything I can. Um, oh, actually, can I draw this as a right... The important thing here is that this is the right angle. This is not the right angle. That's the sort of big, big talk here. Angle. It's like three points or two lines. Alrighty, I can do that. Line. Line. What the? Line. Okay, that's a vector on a line, but still. That's a frickin' line. Okay, fine. We're just gonna choose this point now, see what you do with that. Okay, apparently that didn't like that. Alright, okay, angle three points. P. Unnamed point. And S. Okay. <laughs> Not at all what I wanted. Um, I don't actually want to measure for this angle. Ooh. And actually, that's the wrong frickin' angle. Um. And it's really tight. Can I make this, like, bigger and then have a... 
a bigger angle just because it looks better of course I can I can do whatever the hell I want all right and the cool thing is everything will change in unison now uh-huh but the only problem is of course now we've moved the uh, the uh, <laughs> we've moved the angle to be too far away I'm tempted to go 2.5 on this, but I don't. It gets weird when you don't use integers. All right, you can be back to two again. Okay, and obviously we're not gonna. Can I move where this little doicky thing is? And we're not gonna call it out. We're not gonna call it this. Obviously, let's see if we can move it a little bit, so the angle uh, goes a little bit further. Um. Okay. What is this going? This is going to be the umbral angle. Uh, this is going to be the half the umbral angle. Jesus Christ. We're just going to call it you. You, man, you. Um, yeah, if it were a right angle, we would emphasize it, but it's not. Show label. Uh, we do want to show the label. We do want to show the object. But we do not want to show its value. Oh, no, just name. There we go. And now the question is, can we make this, like, come further out here? Because we have a little bit more space here. Um, color. You, that, you, that's fine. You can do this color. Style. Size. Oh, yeah. Baby needs a new pair of shoes. Oh, yeah. So is it interfering with... Um, the fact that it's got a color is really nice because it means I can, uh, I don't have to put the U exactly where the angle is. It's sort of understood that this is angle U. Um, I didn't like that. That is good stuff. What happens if we, oh, we, you know, we want to keep the opacity where it was. Don't, don't do that. So line style. Oh, can we make little dashed angles? I don't want to do that, but we could if we wanted to. Uh, line thickness. Can we make it really thin? Ah, <gasps> uh, that is gorgeous. That is exactly where we want this to be. And now I think we can put you back in there. Ah, uh, I love this program. Let me go ahead and make save a make a quick save here. Um, even though, of course, we're you know, no, wait, this is not Untitled. This is Umbra. The the early years. Um. Okay, so we have this, and of course this is going to be angle U2, but we're not going to draw it out. Um, so now we have, um, okay, now we want to have the right angle, um, that is P, this thing, this thing, and P, this thing, this thing. Um, so let's do that. So this is actually more of learning how to do, uh, use GeoGebra, which by the way, I'm using online, but you can download it and use it for yourself. I might or might not do that. Um, where's my angles? Uh, there, there, there they are. Angle. Point one. Point two. Point three. And we can't call this alpha. In fact, we don't need a label for it, but we do need to know that it's a right angle. That is literally the only thing we care about. Um, so don't show the label, and but do emphasize that it's a right angle. Okay, and then we want to do the same thing here with this angle, um, and yeah, let's do that. Let's go back to angle mode. Angle mode, it's actually part of the song Angle Dance from Square One Television, which was a wonderful um, show. And again, we want to, um, don't need to name it. And I think maybe the stylistic, the line thickness they use is really too big. So I would like to use a line thickness of one is going to be fine here. And then same for this one. Did I give this a line thickness of zero? I think I want a line thickness of one. Oh, it is one. Okay, that's fine. We're good. Um, and give this also a line thickness of one. Hmm. 
Actually, maybe not. Maybe this is not looking enough like a right angle now. Style. Too much. I think two is fine. I think two might be the default, though. Let's go ahead and go to two over here. And two might look different here because it's a much bigger, uh, much bigger comparison there. Are those both two? I find that hard to believe. Oh well, there you go. I'm gonna bump this up to three. Okay, now I'm actually getting to the point where I'm going too insane with this. Okay, now I need this to be a little bit higher. Watch this. We're gonna get into that cutting the hair thing where you, uh, where you keep changing stuff. Well, now I need this to be bigger. Yep. We're we're go we're getting there. Well, now I need this. I, I was kind of joking, but apparently we are going to get there. Alright, I'm going to stop doing that. This is going to have a style of that. And this is going to have a style of let's see. That's fine. Going a little bit too crazy with this stuff. Um, so that's right angle. That's right angle. Uh, we can measure angle U now. We can measure PT. This is gorgeous. I love this. This is some. Can I, can I change this angle's color? No. Oh, I can make it more opaque, I guess. And I'm beginning to think that maybe I shouldn't be messing with. Should I make this more opaque? No. I think one of the problems I'm having is um, I'm, I'm now doing that thing where you're just trying to do too much uh, too much styling. I will give this a style of two, though, because I want it to be a little bit thicker than it is now. Um, but if I keep doing this, I'm going to just kind of go into a loop. All right, that's good. I guess I could make this smaller because right now these two are the same size even though this is a much smaller circle. But again, I'm going to stop doing that. Okay, so now we have a really nice diagram. Um, and what's the other thing I want to compute is the rise over the run, right? Um, and can I like do dotted line here, dotted line here? Uh, and call them rise and run. No, I can't because this is the wrong line. We need to do it for the upper line first. Because uh, I don't want to really put it in here. We've got too much other crap going on in here now. Um, but we could certainly say like uh, rise over run. And actually we go all the way over to here to this tangent point. So let's do that. Um, Got to be careful. This line has to be like a straight x-axis line. Um, and this line has to be straight y-axis. Um, line segment with given length. Parallel line. Um, and this will be parallel to the x-axis, obviously, but... Mm, best fit lines? That is really awesome. We're not doing it, but it would really be awesome. Um, and I'm wondering if I'm adding too much to this now, actually. In fact, I think I am, so let's not, let's not do that. Because um, that'll just be the tangent of you will be the, the rise over the run. And I can't really put it here. With I might be able to put it, like, down here. Um, rise over run. But... Uh, that doesn't really look as, as good as I want for a right angle. Maybe if I made it... Oh, God. That looks better, actually. Now, this one looks a bit... No, okay, we're done. Um, okay, so now from here we can get our formula for uh, PT, which is what we want. And angle U, 
and then the tangent of angle u, which is also kind of important to us, um, because it represents the, uh, the slope of this line. Uh, oh, so in fact, that's kind of what we want to say here. What is the formula for this line? Um, let's take a look here. I think right now it's in, um, I think right now it's in uh, slope intercept form or something. Yeah, let's see if we can put it in y equals mx plus b. I don't know how, what that does. I don't think it does anything. But anyway. Um, so we can put it here and put a little arrow there. <laughs> y equals mx plus b. Um, or we could draw it parallel to this. Oh, in fact, we can make this a label on this line. Um, so y equals... Let's see. So this intercept is not well labeled. So we, we need to find the equation of this line, and I guess when we do, we can just put it here as a as a as a label. Um, okay, rock and roll. All right, so now we can get back to over here and say that. Um, x is equal to, so this is actually uh, pt is equal to um, uh, st tr over sr minus tr. And so can we put a little box here that says pt? Yeah, I think we can. Let's do some text. Um, PT equals, um, let's just go and cut and paste this and we'll fix it a little bit in just a second here because I don't, I want to go ahead and make the multiplication explicit. And I keep forgetting in, in Emacs, if you want to cut and paste, you have to do the, the cut sort of in a special way. I mean, you wouldn't do it this way, but you, Control W is the, uh, no! It is uh, actually it is meta W because we want to we want to copy not really paste. Um, so we're going to say this is this st times tr. Nope, we're going to put these together. We're going to put these together. We're going to put these together. We're going to put these and this. LaTeX formula. God damn it! Keep giving me better options all the time. So we can now go back over here and solve this equation for x and then see if we can get a LaTeX form for um, for the answer. Did I spell LaTeX wrong for once in my life? Yeah, hang on. Let's see if they have a LaTeX form. They don't. Okay. Do the tech form? They do not. So okay, I cannot use with with Mathix. I cannot cr put stuff into a LaTeX. I mean, I could, but I have to do it manually. Not bold. Not not LaTeX. No, no, no. Just regular text. Not what I wanted. Um. So we will take this and we will convert it to say, because it's R, Rx is PT equals, and uh, technically this is the length of PT, but uh, boy, if you don't know that, you're way lost. Okay, and we're going to keep this text box around and, and edit it a little bit. Um, so we're going to edit this some more. PT equals ST TS, by the way. Uh, let's see if we can edit this sucker. TS. And I guess that's the one bad thing about using uh, multi-letter names is it looks like T times S. So don't think there's anything we can do about that. PT equals TS times TR over SR minus TR. Okay, good deal. So now we're going to find out what angle U is. Um... 
So angle U is just going to be um, either one works. Um, opposite. Sorry, the sine is going to be um, opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite TR over uh, PT is going to be the sine opposite over hypotenuse. So it's the arc sine of. So I guess I should probably say PT equals this thing here. Good. And so then we want the arc sine of PT. Uh, nope, I'm wrong. Arc sine of. Jesus Christ, opposite over hypotenuse. Arc sine of TR over PT. And we want to simplify that if at all possible. Really? So we have ST times TR over SR minus TR. Okay. That's what this is. And now we want to take it uh, TR over that. Is that really that simple? Oh yeah, so I'm guessing if we did that with, uh, with the bigger distance, which is PT plus TS, which we're calling ST, and does that really simplify back to the same thing? Oh, hang on. So ST times TR, so we have ST, we have this number here, that's PT, and because we're doing this from here, we do need to add ST to it, not a problem, and now we're going to take SR and divide the whole thing by that, and then we're going to simplify. Damn! That's really nice. So it's the arc sine of SR, and I'm going to go ahead and write this because we need these com computations here too at some point. Um, but it's going to be U equals arc sine, and we'll go ahead and use Mathematica's. No, we won't. Ooh, 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 no, 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 no. Um, arc sine SR minus TR over ST. Okay. Very, very nice. And this time I'm going to use meta W. Get back over here into this text box. Nope, cancel. I'm going to edit the existing one. Um, I hope this works. I hope this isn't going to... I want a new line there. I want a new line. It's like I want a new drug, except without drugs. So now... Can I stretch this up? Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's not happy. Um, let's see. Okay. And do we need to... S oh, I need to... I think there's an okay down here. I don't want a frickin'... All right, that's fine. Whatever. That was weird. Okay. Okay. So we now have that. So we have ang angle U. <coughs> Excuse me. Now again, this is really the measure of angle U. Angle U itself is an angle. Also, I'm apparently going to choke to death on stream. But I won't. Okay, so now we have u, which is what we want, and now we want the um, the tangent of u, which is the slope of this line. I think I'm going to call this line y equals mx plus b, and then just say what m and b are. That seems like a reasonable thing to do. Okay, settings. Label is going to be the caption. The caption <laughs> is going to be um, mx plus b. And this is going to go. Wait, what the hell? What the hell? 
can't move it where I want? Wait, am I on the... Yeah, it's a line. Alright. You can be not moved anywhere. You apparently are, are glued to this line. Um, alright, screw you. Nope, 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 didn't do me to do that. Alright, let's see if we're going to change the label positioning. Uh, show label caption, basic color style, line style, that's all fine, advanced, dynamic colors, location of label. No. Algebra, scripting. Hmm. Um, you know, the more I think about it, we don't actually need this to be a, uh, a tangent line. We could make it a line that goes between this point, which has a value, which has a name, even though we're not looking at it. Name is A, but we're not, we're not showing it. And we could have a line segment from P to A instead. Exact same thing. Except it won't be a bitch about letting me, um, letting me label it. So let's go back over here. We're not going to show the label. We are going to create another line segment that goes from P to A uh, that is going to be called um, What is the val- oh, the value- what is the value actually? Oh, that's not good. Um, the style, let the, I guess when you do this, it gives you a caption. Y equals MX plus B. Okay, and now can I move this around a little bit? That's not what I meant to do. Um, I think I might have just killed off my... We do. Okay. I'm gonna take you and move you. Can I tilt you? Uh, can I can I rotate this label so it um, rotate label um, so it's parallel to line? Magic. So that's how you make these special lines. You can use line decoration. Oh, and we can actually say the lines, we can refer to them as, you know, blah, 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 blah. We're not going to do that, but we could. Okay, that's cool. So that's y equals mx plus b. This line here. This line's my y equals negative mx plus a different value of b. So now let's see if we can get the slope of this line. Um, I'm really happy with this diagram. Um... So the slope will be, so we'll, we have this, we have the, okay, no, simplify that, arc sine of that, uh, and that's u, right, that is, that is u, and then we want the tangent of the arc sine, which is, well, then we want to simplify that, and I get the feeling that this is going to be ugly. Yep. Not, um, not the greatest. Um, now, can we cheat? Of course we can cheat. Let's take the tangent squared. That should simplify a lot easier. Does that simplify any further? I mean, hmm. I don't think they have a full simplify. Yeah, they don't. This one is tr squared over... I mean, it's almost like you could group by the sr minus tr squared and get one over... Well, that's just going to be ugly, though. Um, so the inverse of this would simplify very nicely.
So that's gorgeous. So can we take one over this or are we just going in loops now? Now we're just going in loops. Okay, um So let's go back to out twenty six. Or or we could misspell it. Um I guess we have Simplify the tangent squared. Uh, I don't really like it. And I guess we did one over this. And got this. And unfortunately this negative one is outside of this, this, uh, this, this division, otherwise we, these would just flip. Um, so yeah, I don't think it's going to get better than this. Let's go ahead and do this. Um, we don't have what, what kind of forms we have. I don't think you can do this in this version though. <sighs> we don't have tech form. Oh, we do have tech form. Unless I invented it by mistake. <laughs> we do have tech form. That is gorgeous. Okay, hang on. So that means we get to change this text box to use tech to use to use la well it's, it's tech but it's latech so first of all we're going to say what pt is gorgeous okay and this is good and unfortunately I think if we're going to use latech we have to use it across the board so um Oh, and actually, I don't want to say that. I want to say PT equal equal that. So, let's see. PT. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, man. Okay. So, let's do that. We, will, we do know what U is. We'll have to remember it, sort of. Now, I wonder if you need a... Um, Shiny. I wonder if we need dollar signs around this like we normally do with the UK. That's not that's not it. It's not my shit. Um yeah, hang on. Alright, we're gonna use the tech. Let's see if we can use um Okay, so apparently they just want raw, raw the tech here. A raw tech, I guess I should say. So this should work. I mean, tech is la tech. Really? That's the best you can do. And not even put a star between that. Screw that. I wonder if we can undo back to where I had it. Yeah, apparently I can. Um, okay, so that sucked too bad. Okay. Um, so we have u. I guess we should say u equals... So I'm, I wonder if we can do reverse search here. Oh, we can. Very nice. So we do have that for you. We'll call that value you. You light up my life. If you love sheep, that is a, a true statement. And we decided this is too ugly, so we want tan u squared simplified. And that's not that's not a hideous formula actually. So this is m squared, not m. And we will duly add that. Okay, I guess it really doesn't like that. Okay, undo. Very careful cut and paste here. Oh. Maybe this is not meant for new lines. 
Maybe you need to put two new lines in there, I guess. I don't know. It's not being very nice. Okay. And I guess I'm going to be a little bit wimpy and just leave the squareds as little carrot twos instead of trying to make them sub superscripts. But I will move everything all together to make life really difficult. Okay, Let's see if that works. It's definitely not liking the new lines. Yeah, all right. Can I... Oh, sorry, these aren't... Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. These aren't LaTeX anymore, are they? My bad. They're not LaTeX anymore. We're just regular... Regular, everyday... Um, not... The tech. There we go. That's that's why it was being weird. Okay, so we have this. Now I have no idea what's giving all these, but let's go ahead and do a, a okay there. Um. Oh, I've got multiple new lines here that I can't see. So that's okay. Um. Okay. I'm beginning to doubt whether this is a good idea, whether this... I'm beginning to think this maybe was not a good idea, is what I meant to say. Um, okay. And... So, I guess... The only other thing we really need here is B, and then we sort of have it. Oh, you know what? There's an extra new line at the beginning of PT that I didn't see because I don't... there. Not that it really matters, but, you know. If I'm going to waste time, I'm going to waste it. Oh, cool, I can do a... this is nice. Oh, actually, but the problem is I don't want it to... Uh, I don't want the grid lines to interfere with, uh, with the formula box. I wonder if I can make the color of the formula box non-transparent. Um, that was a bad idea. No, no. You need to be black. We need However, background color. Um, too much? Way too much. There we go. Background color is white, but it's 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 um, it's not transparent, so the 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 grid lines don't show through it. Oh, we definitely need to save this. Okay. So this is gorgeous, actually. I like this. So now we need to... Um, we need to compute B, and I think that's all we really need. Uh, and then we will have this sort of umbra thing drawn really well. Oh, no, actually we need the, for this line. This line does not is not identical because um, it has the negative slope of this one, but it, the B coordinate is going to be... Uh, Oh, actually, it's going to be symmetric because we are uh, we're on we centered this at zero, so that's fantastic. Um, and if we do move t up and down in the x-axis, that's just going to be a translation in x. So that just means y is equal to n x plus b plus whatever our translation is. So let's see if we can figure out b, and then uh, because I've been going for uh, two frickin' hours, uh, see if I can take a break for lunch. That is, I can take a break for lunch, not you. You you have to continue watching the emptiness of nothing. I don't know what I'm saying. All right. So we have, um, so in real Mathematica, you don't have to do multiple simplifications um, because it, it's smart enough to figure that out. But here it seems like, oh, that's actually kind of, oh, that's actually just the square root of what we had before. So we'll call that M. Okay. And now to find B, we just basically need to say um, what the value is where this line intersects. Well, that's literally what what the x y intercept is. Um, 
So based on what we know, um, and we know what P we know what PT is. So, so if we put in the point P, we have zero equal equal minus PT because PT is a positive quant quantity because um, we have a little arrow for it. Um, plus b, right? Um, yeah. When x is negative pt, y is 0. So that should not... That's actually trivial, isn't it? In fact, that's so trivial, I probably don't even need to do this. So that just means b is also going to be... Um, i got to be a little bit careful here. Um, STTR over SR minus TR. Mm, I'm suspicious. Right. The reason I'm suspicious, of course, is because this is M times X plus B, not just... Yeah. I knew there was something more going on there. That's the way it looks. Actually, even that's not that difficult because it's just going to be B equals M times PT. Um, now, durst I cheat? Um, I really don't think I should cheat. Okay, that's not what I meant. I meant 1, 1, 2, I'm sure. There's that, and then we want this, and then we want to square this. And then we want to simplify the square, and then we want to do whatever the hell is we want to do. That's actually not too bad. I mean, the other option is just to say here that B is equal to um, MP. <laughs> uh, M times PT, because it is. Um, and I guess that's easy to see, because if you go up P, you have to go uh, M times PT. Uh, and this is the other way of saying it, which is um, mm. So if B is MT, B squared is M squared, which we have, times PT squared, which we also have PT. Um, Decisions, decisions. Um, yeah, I guess I don't want to actually put this out there, so I think we're just going to say something that's really obvious, really true, really fun. A good time was had by all. Okay, we want to say that um, B is equal to M times PT. Aren't we special? cheating quite a bit there. Okay, uh, I'll go ahead and save this, although I think we just we just did save it. I think that there's an autosave or something here too. Okay, all right. So now the, the, what the issue, what we're saying here basically is we have now pretty much gotten all the information we want about the Umbra. We are gonna use this information uh, later on uh, to see you know whether or not it, it intersects a given uh, sphere. Um, and, Let's see, let's see, let's see. I am missing one thing. The formula for this is both the negative in terms of the slope and negative in terms of B. So I do, I do want to actually label that. Um, oh, actually, no, there's a little bit more we want to do here. Uh, we don't really need this line to go past. So I think this line here, um, we can delete, but I want to be really, really careful because I want uh, there's two lines overlapping here. That so one of them is the one I want, the other is not the one I want. Um, but let's see. Um, I want to draw this tangent point also, and I don't think I need this. I just need this tangent point, and then we can delete the line that goes beyond the two. Uh, well, actually, this one looks kind of nice, doesn't it? Because it kind of um, Mm, let's find out. All right, let's go ahead and draw a. Uh, let's go ahead and draw the tangent between this line and the circle. Um, is 
circle, line, intersect point. And no, no, I don't want to do it again. Just want to do it once. Uh, then I'm going to draw a line segment from P to C. P, C, get it? It's like a computer, except we're going to get rid of the word C. And we're not going to call it K either. Now, no, no, Jesus Christ, the thing is obnoxious. Delete, be gone from this place. No, <laughs> seriously? <laughs> Delete. Delete, and then I'm going to go back into the draggy mode. Okay, so then, that's good. Um, if I've done this correctly, we can now delete the conics and still have what we actually need. Um, be gone! That was horrible! Be back! Um... So what the hell? Because I do have these other lines. Oh, maybe I can just say don't show. Um, um, so settings. Don't show the object. There we go. And now you, you don't get to be shown either. So now we have what we're actually looking for, which is the uh, sort of really nice looking uh, uh, diagram of an umbra that doesn't involve lines going off to the middle of nowhere. And you, my friend, will not be named K, you will be named Y equals, well, okay, you can be still be named K if you want, um, but you're going to be um, captioned Y equals negative MX minus B. Uh, yes, it's negative one times the other line, so this is good. And do I need to do a save here? Because I mean, it's just sort of, it's like automatic, isn't it? Yeah. And because I can't point you exactly where I want... Ooh, I guess you're going to be down here next to your brother. So, okay. Am I happy? Well, no, of course not. There's a lot of suffering in the world. Um, but am I satisfied with this diagram? Nope. You do not get to have a name. Okay, so this is actually a pretty good umbral diagram, uh, if we put this in here too. Um, this is actually a pretty good umbral diagram. So um, this shows the, uh, the conal umbra of, uh, of two spheres. I mean, they're circles, but they're spheres. It uh, tells you the distance to the umbral cone, tells you the angle of the umbral cone. Uh, obviously, it goes on forever in the other direction, which I don't think we care about. Um, does it give you a parametric formula for the umbral cone, and the answer to that is no, it does not. So, can we do that? Um, I mean, we can, obviously. We could just say, um, y of 0 is negative pt 0, obviously, and then just say y of t is going to equal um, yeah, that plus, you know, whatever the x value is. I guess if we want to be really, really clever, we would make this uh, this uh, para parameterization go from here and then be one either here or here, depending on what we're, what we're feeling. Um, I probably don't care at this point. I think that is something we can, we can leave alone. Um, we could also make this whole angle equal to u and then say u over 2 equals arc sine just to confuse people. Um, shall we do that? No, we shall not. In fact, I think we're going to leave this the way it is right now and uh, call lunch. Not, again, I, I'm going to call lunch. You, you, you are not. Um, in theory, I could start making lunch and come back here and do this, but I, I like this diagram. I think, I think I like this diagram enough that I want to move you a little bit to the right. Actually, now we can actually move you here because you can block numbers that aren't being used. And there you go. It is gorgeous. The whole thing fits into one little box. Okay, um, let's see who's in the stream, but I'm going to end the stream here in a second. 
Uh, thanks for the people who remained in the stream. I hope you learned something, but you probably did not. Uh, I'm going to stop the stream now. I plan to be back later this afternoon. It's about 2.47 p.m. my time, 21.47 in uh, Greenwich. Uh, so that would be probably, um, you know, 23.47, about two hours from now. Maybe right, right when it hits 20.20 in Greenwich. All right, thank you for watching the stream, and goodbye for now.